For as long as we have looked up, we have wondered. The night sky, with its countless points of light, has always been a source of profound mystery. We see stars and planets, distant galaxies and nebulae, but what we see is only a fraction of what is truly out there. Much of the universe is hidden from our view. It is shrouded in cosmic dust, or its light is too old and too stretched for our eyes to perceive. To see these hidden realms, we needed a new kind of eye. This is the purpose of the James Webb Space Telescope. It is humanity's new window to the dawn of time itself. The story of our universe is a long and epic tale. It began with a singular, explosive moment nearly 14 billion years ago. In the first few hundred million years that followed, the very first stars ignited. These were the pioneers, the first furnaces that forged the elements necessary for life. From these first stars, the first galaxies began to form, like cosmic islands in an expanding sea of darkness. The James Webb Space Telescope was built precisely for this reason. It was designed to capture this ancient, fragile light and tell us the story of our cosmic origins. Building such an audacious machine was a monumental undertaking. It was a challenge that pushed the boundaries of engineering and human collaboration. The concept for this telescope began decades ago, even before its predecessor Hubble had left the ground. The solution was a work of genius inspired by the art of origami. The telescope's primary mirror, a breathtaking structure six and a half meters across, was made from 18 individual hexagonal segments. Each segment is coated in a microscopically thin layer of pure gold, chosen because it is exceptionally good at reflecting infrared light. These segments were designed to fold up like the petals of a flower. The solution was a sun shield the size of a tennis court. It is made of five layers of a special material called captain, each layer as thin as a human hair. On the sunlit side, temperatures can reach well above boiling, but on the shaded side, where the telescope's mirrors and instruments reside, the temperature plummets to an astonishing minus 233 degrees Celsius. The construction of the James Webb Space Telescope was a global effort. It brought together thousands of scientists, engineers and technicians from NASA, the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency. They worked for more than two decades, overcoming countless technical hurdles and delays. They tested each component in extreme conditions, simulating the harsh environment of space here on Earth. It was a testament to human ingenuity and our shared, unyielding desire to explore the unknown. The culmination of all this work arrived on a Christmas morning. On December 25th, 2021, the James Webb Space Telescope sat atop an Ariane 5 rocket at a launch pad in French Guiana. The world held its breath. The launch had to be perfect. The ascent was flawless, a powerful and graceful climb into the blue sky. But this was only the beginning of the telescope's journey. The most dangerous and intricate part of its mission was yet to come. It had to reach a very special place in space, a point of gravitational stability known as the second Lagrange point, or L2. This location is about one and a half million kilometers away from Earth, four times farther than the moon. For the next 30 days, the telescope traveled through the void. As it journeyed, it began its complex unfolding sequence. Hundreds of individual steps had to be completed perfectly, all controlled by commands sent from a control room back on Earth. There was no possibility of a repair mission. It had to work. Then came the most harrowing part, the unfurling of the giant sunshield. The secondary mirror swung into place on its long tripod and then the two side wings of the primary mirror folded forward, locking into position to form one single giant golden eye. The world watched and waited. Each successfully completed step was met with a mixture of relief and celebration. Finally, after a month of travel and deployment, the James Webb Space Telescope arrived at its final destination. It had successfully transformed itself from a compact package into a fully-fledged observatory. The engineering was a triumph. The journey was a success. Now, another period of waiting began. Each of its 18 mirror segments had to be meticulously aligned. This process involved adjusting them by distances smaller than the width of a virus until they acted as one perfect seamless mirror.
What truly sets the James Webb Space Telescope apart is not just its size, but the incredible technology it carries. Its ability to see in the infrared spectrum is its greatest asset. When we look at a distant galaxy, the light from its stars has been traveling for billions of years. During this immense journey, the universe itself has been expanding. This expansion stretches the light waves, shifting them from visible light into longer infrared wavelengths. This is a phenomenon known as redshift. Webb's instruments are specifically tuned to capture this stretch light. The telescope carries a suite of four highly advanced scientific instruments. There is the Near Infrared Camera, or NIRCAM, which is the telescope's primary imager. Then there is the Near Infrared Spectrograph, or NIRSPEC. This instrument does something remarkable. It can observe 100 different objects simultaneously. It works by breaking down the light from each object into its constituent colors, creating a spectrum. This spectrum acts like a chemical fingerprint, telling scientists what an object is made of, how fast it is moving, and its temperature. Another key instrument is the mid-infrared instrument, or MIRI. This instrument sees even longer infrared wavelengths, which are crucial for peering through the thickest clouds of cosmic dust. Dust that is opaque to visible light and even near-infrared light becomes transparent when viewed with MIRI. This allows us to see the very hearts of stellar nurseries where new stars and planetary systems are being born. To function, MIRI must be even colder than the rest of the telescope. It has its own special cooling system, a cryo-cooler, that brings its temperature down to just 7 degrees above absolute zero. Finally, there is the fine guidance sensor and near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph, or FGS NIRIS. The fine guidance sensor is what allows the telescope to point with such incredible stability. The nearest part of the instrument is particularly adept at studying the atmospheres of exoplanets, planets orbiting other stars. By observing the starlight that passes through an exoplanet's atmosphere, it can detect the chemical signatures of gases like water vapor, methane and carbon dioxide. This technology is our best tool yet in the search for habitable worlds beyond our own. In the summer of 2022, the world was given its first glimpse of what the James Webb Space Telescope could do. The first full-color images were released, and honestly they were nothing short of revolutionary. The most famous of these was Webb's first deep field. It was an image of a tiny patch of sky, an area that would be covered by a grain of sand held at arm's length. Within that minuscule spot, the telescope revealed not hundreds, but thousands of galaxies. It was the deepest and sharpest infrared image of the distant universe ever taken. Each speck of light was a galaxy, some seen as they were over 13 billion years ago. Some were warped and stretched into long arcs by the gravity of a massive galaxy cluster in the foreground, a phenomenon known as gravitational lensing. This effect acts like a natural cosmic telescope, magnifying the light from even more distant objects behind it. Another of the first images showed a stellar nursery known as the Carina Nebula. Previous images from Hubble had shown this region as a beautiful swirl of gas and dust, but Webb's infrared vision pierced through the obscuring clouds, revealing hundreds of previously hidden newborn stars. It showed jets of gas and dust being blasted out by these young stars, sculpting the nebula from within. It was like looking into a cosmic mountain range, with cliffs of gas and glowing valleys where the next generation of stars is igniting. These images are not just pretty pictures, they provide vital data that helps astronomers understand the complex and violent process of star formation in exquisite detail. These first images were a promise fulfilled. They showed that the telescope and all its complex systems were working perfectly. It was clear that the James Webb Space Telescope was not just going to incrementally improve our understanding of the universe, it was going to completely rewrite the textbooks. One of the most exciting missions for the James Webb Space Telescope is the study of exoplanets. These are worlds that orbit stars other than our Sun. For centuries, they were purely the stuff of speculation. Now we know of thousands of them. The great challenge, however, is to learn what these worlds are like. Webb is uniquely equipped to answer these questions. It does so by using a technique called transit spectroscopy. 
When an exoplanet passes in front of its star, from our point of view, a tiny fraction of the starlight filters through its atmosphere. Webb's instruments can capture this light and analyze it. Different molecules in the planet's atmosphere absorb specific wavelengths or colors of light. By looking at which colors are missing from the starlight, scientists can determine what gases are present. One of the very first targets for this kind of observation was a hot gas giant called WASP-96b. Webb pointed its instruments at the planet and with remarkable clarity detected the unmistakable chemical signature of water vapor in its atmosphere. It also found evidence for clouds and haze. It was a stunning confirmation of the telescope's power to probe the chemistry of these distant worlds. This capability goes far beyond just finding water. In another groundbreaking observation, the telescope was pointed at an exoplanet named K218b. This planet is what is known as a super-Earth, larger than our planet but smaller than Neptune, and it orbits within its star's habitable zone. Webb's observations found not only methane and carbon dioxide in its atmosphere, but also detected a molecule called dimethyl sulfide. On Earth, this substance is produced almost exclusively by life, particularly marine phytoplankton. The discovery of dimethyl sulfide on K218b was electrifying. It is by no means definitive proof of life. There could be unknown geological or chemical processes that produce this molecule on such a different world. But it is a deeply intriguing clue. It is what scientists call a potential biosignature. It shows that Webb can detect the kinds of molecules that might just might point towards biological activity. This is changing the search for life from a purely theoretical exercise into a practical observational science. We are now able to gather real chemical data from the atmospheres of worlds light years away and ask for the first time if we are alone. For decades, our models of the early universe have been built on a clear and logical progression. We believed that after the Big Bang, small, simple galaxies formed first. Over billions of years, these small galaxies would have gradually merged and collided, growing larger and more complex over time. This hierarchical model made sense. It predicted that the very earliest galaxies should be small, somewhat clumpy, and not yet well organized. The James Webb Space Telescope was expected to confirm this picture by finding these small, infant galaxies. But when Webb looked back into that primordial era, it found something completely unexpected. The telescope discovered a surprising number of large, bright and well-structured galaxies in the very early universe. Some of these galaxies appear to have existed when the cosmos was only 500 to 700 million years old, a mere fraction of its current age. According to our existing models, there simply should not have been enough time for galaxies to grow so massive and mature so quickly. It is a cosmic conundrum. It is as if you looked into a nursery and found fully grown adults. These discoveries are challenging the very foundations of our theories of galaxy formation. One of the most notable of these early giants has been nicknamed the Sparkler. It is a galaxy seen as it was over 13 billion years ago. What makes it so remarkable is that it appears to be surrounded by a halo of what look like globular clusters, ancient dense groupings of stars. On our own Milky Way, globular clusters are thought to be some of the oldest structures. Finding them around a galaxy so early in cosmic history is a puzzle. It suggests that the process of building up these large, complex systems started much earlier and happened much faster than we ever thought possible. Scientists are now scrambling to adjust their models to account for this new, unexpected data. This doesn't mean our entire understanding of cosmology is wrong. But it does mean that the story is more complicated than we realized. Perhaps the first generation of stars was much more massive and burned much more brightly than we assumed, seeding the universe with heavy elements faster. Perhaps the dark matter that provides the gravitational scaffolding for galaxies behaved differently in the early universe. The James Webb Space Telescope has not just given us answers, it has given us a whole new set of profound questions. It is forcing us to rethink the processes that governed the birth of the first light and the assembly of the first cosmic cities. The story of the universe just became a lot more interesting. As we stand here today, the James Webb Space Telescope continues its silent, cold vigil, nearly a million and a half kilometers from home. 
It is still at the very beginning of its operational life, which is expected to last for a decade or more. The discoveries we have talked about, as revolutionary as they are, represent just the first few pages in a vast new book of cosmic knowledge that is now being written. Every day, the telescope sends back new data, new images, and new spectra for scientists around the world to analyze. The telescope's gaze is not limited to the distant universe. It is also giving us a fresh look at our own cosmic neighborhood. It has produced stunning new images of the planets in our solar system, revealing intricate weather patterns on Jupiter and faint rings around Neptune with breathtaking clarity. It is studying asteroids and comets, the leftover building blocks from our solar system's formation. By understanding their composition, we learn more about the raw materials that came together to form Earth and the other planets. The journey of discovery is a human one. It is driven by a deep and innate curiosity, a need to understand our place in the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope is the latest and most powerful instrument we have built to pursue that quest. But the story does not end with the telescope. It lives in the work of the scientists who interpret its data and it lives in the minds of everyone who looks at its images and feels a sense of wonder. It is a shared adventure. The questions it helps us ask. Where did we come from? How did the universe begin? Are we alone? Are fundamental to the human experience. So I encourage you to keep looking up. Follow the stories that emerge from this remarkable observatory. The universe, as Webb is showing us, is more surprising, more complex, and more beautiful than we could have ever imagined. It is a story that is still unfolding, with countless chapters yet to be written. The light from distant stars and ancient galaxies continues its long journey towards us, and now, for the first time, we have an eye that is patient enough and powerful enough to see it when it arrives. Our journey of understanding is and always will be just beginning. Please like and subscribe to Cosmic Discover.